restrictions relax, I'm travelling across the UK to see how ready the country's top attractions are, to meet the people getting us excited about travel again and hear their plans for the new normal. This time, I'm in Northern Ireland for a very unique day trip. Hello from Belfast. Now I've just flown in, but my plan is to head straight out of the city and explore the Causeway Coastal Route. Now the capital is the perfect starting point to tackle the 120 mile road trip, which hugs the northeast coastline. So let's go. To make this trip a bit more sustainable, I've hired an electric car. Whilst it's certainly possible to drive the whole route, in a day. You definitely won't have time to stop at all the sites and there are a lot of sites. However, I've made a plan and I know where I'm going to hit first. This little waterfall is Wilshire's Gala. Right, so we've made it down to the starting path. This is the original sign from 1902. Watch your head coming through here. Oh. The Gobbins is a three mile walk along the cliff path. Before Covid, half the visitors came from abroad. This is cool. The biggest part of those were Americans, followed closely by Germans. But during COVID, obviously nobody could travel, so they all wanted to come and do their staycation with us. How have you found it? That was brilliant. Really, really good. Very enjoyable. So, Barbara, how was it during COVID? We just passed that big group on the bridge. I can't really see how you social distance from this bath. Well, in a normal tour, we always do try to pass on a bridge. But yeah. as you can see, the passageways are really narrow. But during COVID, it was essential we passed on bridges. Plus, the groups were just to 10 as opposed to 15. Right. The path was conceptualised by the civil engineer Barclay Dean Wise. He helped bring the railway system to Northern Ireland and he wanted to create a unique attraction for people to take the train to. This is the original day trip, isn't it? From it Belfast. was the original day trip from Belfast. Long dresses and heels. Long dresses and heels, <laughs> wide brimmed hats, the lot. But they would have come along here for the day. The same of we have been doing all during COVID. Yeah. Uh, doing our day trips, just anywhere within Ireland or locally. So in some ways, COVID and what's happened over the last two years, Zoom has brought back the spirit of the Gobbins. It's come full circle. Yeah. Yeah. On the whole, this walk has been really calm and serene. I was expecting the waves to be crashing on our feet, but apparently it's because it's low tide. However, what has been surprising are all these birds. They're called kittiwakes because of the noise they make. Kittiwakes, kittiwakes, kittiwakes. Can you hear it? So my next stop is an hour up the coast, but then I need to take a little detour off. It's actually the longest stretch of driving I have planned for the day. Welcome to the Dark Hedges, one of the most photographed natural phenomena in Northern Ireland, mostly due to a particular TV show. Well, where are you from? Barcelona. From London. We're from uh, British Columbia, Canada. Oh wow, you've come a long way. Yes. And what brings you to the Dark Hedges? Game of Game Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, we've yes, seen every we... episode, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> If you're wondering, this is the scene that's made it so popular. Adrian runs a Game of Thrones tour business. He calls himself the other Sir Davos, as he was actually an extra and body double in the TV series. The trees have been here for over 247 years, mm -hmm. mostly unknown until Game of Thrones came along and decided to use it for a tiny little part of a scene in uh, season two. And, and then that kind of put it on the map. So as a tour guide now, how have you found it over the past few years? Uh, most, most tourism completely shut down, as we all know. I'm lucky, I live just one mile that way from the Dark Hedges, so this was my daily walk for exercise during that period, and it was really nice to see it. And it gave it an opportunity to kind of recover from the over-tourism, yeah. you know. Um, Did it get quite damaged then? Especially the verges, right. you know, even though the road is closed mm -hmm. and it has been closed to traffic since 2017, it gave it a chance to recover a little bit, you know. Now that's ticked off my list, I'm headed back out to the coast. It's only 15 minutes up to a place that's just reopened after two years. This is the Karakareed Rope Bridge, first built by salmon fishermen over 250 years ago. Woo! Pretty bouncy. Up until the 70s, this was just a single rope bridge with a handful of gapped planks. 
So I'm super glad it's been updated because this is amazing and I wouldn't have done it back then. Much like at the Dark Hedges, the National Trust says it's noticed how nature has recovered on the site with fewer people going. Now numbers are limited to help nature thrive. So if you want to cross the bridge and explore the little island, you have to pre-book online first. From Carrick Reed, it's a beautiful drive along the coast, passing some noteworthy sites from Ballantoy Harbour, the Giant's Causeway, the beautiful Dunluce Castle ruin. And then to Portrush, which will be where I end my trip. But first... Did you know that this area is home to the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world? Bushmills was granted its license by King James I in 1608. And fortunately for me, their tours have just kick-started again after a two-year hiatus. Before COVID, more than 150,000 people would visit each year for a peek behind the scenes. And there's just time for a quick masterclass from the master distiller himself. So really, to get it from the barrel, uh, so we always like a little bit of ceremony. So Don't drop any. Into the barrel, not a drop to be spilled, no, because it's such, such precious <laughs> liquid. You have a nose. Do uh, you get these lovely, mm. it's very friendly on your tongue, so very vanilla, toasted wood. Uh, really with Bushmills it's very friendly on your palate, so it actually draws you in. Uh, and actually put it to your ear, it's saying, try me, drink me, you love me. <laughs> it's been a packed schedule, but I've heard there's no better way to end your day in Northern Ireland than at a traditional family-run pub. We're lucky we have the live music at least once a week. It's great to get musicians back in the bar as well because they're, the, they're the life and soul of it and they create the atmosphere, you know. Oh, we're starting again. So much of the Causeway coastal route relies on tourism and now with the last of the attractions finally reopen in time for summer, it seems this part of the Emerald Isle is back in business and ready to extend that famous Irish hospitality.